Hi, today I'd like to extend an olive branch to any Apple authorized service provider who feels like they're getting the short end of the stick in their dealings with Apple. It wasn't until I visited Linus and heard from him what so many Apple authorized service providers had been telling him that I realized that it wasn't just that Apple authorized service providers don't get to offer the best options to the customer, but that there's actually this entire culture of fear built around the entire model that just makes me sick. And I want to talk to people about this and I want to share what's going on. The problem is that since there's this culture of fear, since it's so easy to have your access and your authorization revoked, nobody wants to speak out about it. So what I'd like to do is have conversations with people, but anonymize those conversations. I'm more than happy to use plugins on our interview so that your voice sounds like you, you swallowed helium and is pitch shifted and everything, so nobody's able to identify exactly who you are. I would like to speak with people that I can verify work at Apple authorized service centers who feel that they have something to say about the increasing culture of fear when it comes to being an Apple authorized service provider and just how limited you are in being able to offer good service to your customers. The more I speak to real Apple authorized service providers, the more I realize that these are people that genuinely want to provide a good customer experience, but they're not able to do so within the Apple ecosystem. What I found interesting when I got to speak to Linus was that many Apple authorized service providers are not allowed to simply buy parts to stock them in case a customer walks in. They need to order certain parts for that specific repair. Those parts are billed to the Apple authorized service provider at insane markups unless they return the old one. This is to ensure that none of these parts ever make it out into the wild. The problem with this scenario is that if you go to an independent service center like mine, where we stock parts, I can tell you the job will be done in two hours. Whereby if you go to Apple authorized service providers, you actually get told the turnaround time of the amount of time it takes for the part to be ordered, then shipped, then received, plus the repair. So unauthorized repair actually winds up being faster than authorized repair, in spite of the fact that they are forced to live up to ridiculous metrics and spend insane amounts of money in order to become authorized, they actually wind up being a less attractive option to the consumer. So to get the ball rolling, I'm going to read a letter that came up from someone who has been sending us phones for data recovery for the past two years, who may or may not be in considerable hot water if Apple knew that they were sending us in warranty phones for data recovery, even though they don't offer data recovery. So I'm gonna be sure to mask out all their information. I'm gonna read this letter and get the ball rolling. Please do contact me if you have a story because I would absolutely love to hear what you have to say and I'd love to explain to the viewers of this channel a little bit more about how Apple authorized service providers work. So, if you want to read the following on a video, be my guest, and of course, just block out my name or whatever. Our internal Apple support for immediate client issues involves filling out a chat form, waiting for a chat representative in another country to respond, the support person then rereads your issue description back to you in their own words, completely misunderstanding the main issue, asks if their misread is correct, then proceeds to tell me to contact someone else. It's at that point that I ask myself, why is it that they have a live person on the line if they can't fucking help me when I'm chatting? It's not like I have a red phone I could pick up that just goes to someone who knows what is going on, and mind you, chats take me on average 10 minutes to get by the pleasantries of customer service jargon, then another five minutes of telling me that I wasted 10 minutes. Apple authorized service providers are treated worse than actual third-party repair centers in the sense that we're essentially documented competition that Apple fucks with whenever they want. God, I'm so sick of everyone swooning over Apple and their stock and their meaningless upgrades and innovation. Innovate on your fucking calibration machine, you douchebags. Anything that costs $20,000 and works whenever it feels like it, from a tech company no less, would be the laughing stock of the tech world. The fact that they're so secretive about shit that doesn't matter blows my mind. And by the way, this is just back to me here. This is, I imagine that he's talking about the Horizon machine. It's a $20,000 machine required. So when you get your iPhone screen changed, any iPhone repair shop that changes iPhone screens that's authorized needs to give Apple $20,000 for a Horizon machine, which pairs the home button to the phone because that process requires a $20,000 machine, which apparently doesn't even work half the time, but I digress. I wonder if it's because they don't want their IP stolen or they don't want people to see that they've surpassed all other tech companies in incompetence. If someone who sells and services your own product under your own, their own supervision is not provided the tools, parts, and support necessary, why authorize this at all? Is it so we can try to sell your products that more and more people are avoiding? The outright hostility that Apple has towards its own employees, affiliates, and fans is writing on the wall. 
If Apple stops making shit based on what's popular that month, maybe they'll have a chance at doing something actually innovative. If they don't, they'll go extinct. Extinct. My two cents, someone's sick of the bullshit. And what I really want to hit at here is that so many of these companies, they want to offer good service to their customers. They don't want to tell their customers they have to spend on a new top case when all they need is a battery. They don't want to tell their customers they need to spend 900 bucks if they have a keyboard flaw. They don't want to tell their customers that they have no option. But they are, f And they don't want to tell their customers that there's a one to two week turnaround on iPhone screen repair because they can't get the machine to do it in-house, even if they have the $20,000 to buy a Horizon machine, unless they're on some special list. These places, they want to do better, but they can't. I want to hear from you. Contact me with your stories. Contact me for an interview. I'd like to hear what you have to say, and the 480,000 subscribers in this channel would too. Because a lot of people wonder, why is it that we choose to be unauthorized? Why do we choose to not become certified or authorized or trained or licensed, whatever, within the Apple ecosystem to provide these repairs rather than doing it the way we do right now? And the reason that we do repairs the way we do right now is because we actually want to provide repairs to customers rather than offshoring support to another country or acting as a mailing forwarder to send it back to a depot that's gonna charge them 75% the cost of the product when it was new in the inbox. And I think that getting more stories out like this is going to be crucial in this kind of repair culture changing towards us actually fixing things rather than just mailing it back to somebody who recycles it and sends the customer a new one. And with Apple being worth over $1 trillion at this time, it is more important now than ever to expose these practices because if we don't, then every other company is gonna follow suit. As I've said in many videos over the past several years, as I've said when I uh, went over the new Microsoft Surface and called it a pile of crap, when I went over the Samsung S6 and called it a pile of crap, Everybody copies the things that Apple does wrong, not the things that Apple does right. And I really don't want to see these practices, uh, you know, f finding their way to other companies. So that's it for today. Please do contact me if you're an Apple authorized service provider who wants to speak out against this type of stuff. I will 110% respect your privacy, confidentiality, and uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And if it doesn't go to that job, and the old part is not directly returned to Apple, the Apple authorized service provider is then charged some ridiculous, insane markup on that, pri that part. So for ex Oh, now you don't want to speak anymore? Fucking cat. Anyway.